Hey guys, this is Andre, a certified translator and still a real estate concierge. Today we're talking about headlines in Belarus, what ha what's happening outside, what's happening around us, what's happening inside the country. Thank you very much for staying with the channel. Thank you for all your continuous support. Some people are helping a lot to keep the channel going. And let's see what happened through the past week. Paying tribute to the regular uh, theme of these coverages, COVID. I must say that COVID is kind of gone. It's officially not here. Some uh, 10 uh, uh, death cases a day at best, at least reported officially. The travel restrictions have been completely lifted. If you remember, the western border was tricky to cross unless you had some specific reason for business or anything. Now, if you have a visa, you can come through the airport and through the land border. And if you're eligible for visa-free mode, you can fly in and fly out via Turkey, United Arab Emirates, Georgia, Armenia and Russia. For Russia, you'll need a transit visa most likely. If you have vaccination certificate, the um, uh, PCR test is not required. Self-isolation is not mandatory and you don't have to fill any boring forms, especially if boring forms in Russian, upon your arrival. Just travel in if you feel necessary to travel. And speaking of visas and travels, uh, Brest and Grodna visa-free uh, area has been opened up again. If you remember the visa-free mode through the western border, which only embraces two regions here, <laughs> it's operating again and it's quite easy to access those territories if you have a need to. Speaking of the necessity and the safety concerns, some uh, foreigners, perhaps uh, not ungroundedly, are asking me if it's safe for them to travel to Belarus because Canada, because America, because blah blah blah. Yeah, it's uh, comparatively safe from all angles to travel in here. Never mind your country impose some sanctions on Russia and Belarus or just Russia. Nobody is uh, lining up Americans or, let's say, Germans by the wall in the, at the airport and uh, shoots them or searches them uh, pocket to pocket kind of thing, like they li like to do in the Cold War movies, everything goes smoothly. The only thing you should be concerned about is the uh, cash supply uh, to go on with, some pocket money to have uh, on your person because your card may not work here, not necessarily because of the um, uh, sanctions uh, from your bank but because of the card readers of the businesses here whose banks were sanctioned there are just three banks sanctioned here otherwise everything is kind of normal life is normal except for the prices are up and the salaries are not and let's talk about this a little bit amidst all these horrible updates i'm hearing that inflation in eu is galloping eu has been printing too much money to help everybody out of covid trouble and it seems like covid is still there pressing their economy now guys in the uk in germany could you really tell me if the food prices and fuel prices are badly up and the welfare standards are going down it's kind of interesting because in the long term run this is going to exacerbate become even worse and if the winter is going to be too cold it's going to be too bad it would seem also that the United European states are a little bit divided over the sanctions against the Russian resources, oil and gas. Seems like Americans have uh, lifted these things off the Russian uh, bank operators, gas and oil operators, because they need these resources. As for Europe, not all the Europeans can go without them. And since I was kind of brought up observing the Western you know, democratic ways and everything. I'm kind of surprised to hear that some people associated with the Russian government that may have connection or financial backing of the Russian government have their assets seized basically everywhere across Europe where Europeans can reach that. It's kind of interesting, although they may be wrong, the, you know, the key word is may. I was always thinking that in the West they first sue, present the proof, evidence, blah, blah, blah. But here they just arrest a dozen boats, uh, houses, villas, whatever shit. And out of the blue, these guys are bad guys, culprits, and this stuff has to be confiscated. Which is kind of funny for the European ways, the way we stereotypically imagine them here. Speaking of the stereotypic European ways, I would like to share a little story of my recent shopping. I don't do too much shopping recently, but uh, since there are many car accidents lately, if you know what I mean, I decided to buy a few uh, bleeding uh, stopping tourniquets uh, for myself, of course. And a good gentleman from Germany brought me two uh, items, two first aid kits, uh, apparently US standard from Germany, 55 euro each. And it's funny that uh, items in all of them were uh, basically with uh, outdated shelf life by five or seven years. The tourniquets themselves were from 2010. 
and uh, they were new in the description. They were basically not used, thank God, no bloodstains out there uh, inside the packs. And the packs themselves don't seem to have any field uh, wear and tear on them. But it's kind of funny for the medical supplies to be sold this way. Uh, I'll post the ads from the eBay in Germany, not, you know, in some Asian countries in Germany uh, here for you to, to see where I'm wrong. Maybe I didn't get the description right because Deutsch felt mir sehr schwer, but this kind of marketing is strange for, you know, Western suppliers. Maybe they did take away some stuff from Afghanistan after all, instead of leaving it all behind like the media led us to believe. Speaking of Russia itself, the news is kind of disturbing. The uh, Russian army is, uh, seems to be regrouping and uh, the next hit is going to um, affect eastern Ukraine. Whatever strategic plans they have there, you will have from different coverages. But it seems like another wave of disturbance is coming our way. Belarusian economy looks like it has uh, gotten through the first wave of shock when uh, investors with uncertainty were dropping bonds, shares, papers, whatever they normally drop in these cases. And it seems like with all the sanctions coming mostly from the West, the blanks of the uh, Russian economy left behind by the Western brands are swiftly occupied by the inv investors from the East. So Russian ruble rate which is now improving, maybe improving short term or long term. By the way, tell me in the comments if you think it's going to be improving, especially in light of these gas deals and payments in rubles. And uh, if you believe that Yuan is going to be a new international currency, I'd love to know your opinion on that. Sanctions don't seem to be working out universally over here. While uh, Western Union is clearly gone, there are at least three uh, money uh, transfer services that are still working and it depends on your country and uh, some other settings and the view of that country on Belarus and where it belongs in the sanction system. Uh, whether or not this, the transfer is going to be successful, I'll put the names over here. These systems were uh, said to be working by different expats, but again, depending on if uh, the local banks uh, of the recipient are on the sanctions list and many, many other factors. So you have to try one or two or all the three of them to, to make it work. Western Union is clearly gone from Belarus. Speaking of postal services, I was under impression they shut down, but DHL is still operating, but in the outcoming direction, the uh, uh, papers can be posted. For instance, I need to post some documents to Turkey, and it's about a hundred bucks, some uh, one week uh, long, it's gonna get there, but any incoming paperwork cannot come through leading couriers like FedEx, DHL, UPS. I didn't check them all, so you may double check if you are planning to send something in here. Last but not least, Russia's Alpha Bank seems to be under sanctions as well by our American, well, let's say Western friends, Western meaning American. Uh, but Belarusian subsidiary of Alpha Bank, local Alpha Bank, which is uh, with uh, most of my clients, uh, very handy app again is still working. It's not going to be affected by these as they claim. And as these goings on are picking up, the uh, wave of people wanting to leave Belarus is also picking up. The uh, uh, people are lining up to apostille their documents, their school, university certificates and other papers. The uh, foreign ministry department for this looks like a mess. Now they've uh, come to organize it a little bit, but it used to be an almost non-stop queue of people lining up. And like I said previously, apostille fee costs were increased 10 times. Uh, goodbye present from the government. With the recent events in mind, Belarus is not really a mainstream destination to relocate. But if you're considering to land here eventually, for some reason, there are different reasons. People quote me that bring them here. It may be an opportune time to start shopping because a lot of people, a lot of apartment owners, sellers are moving and they want to get rid of their assets located here. And of course, they don't want to get paid in rubles. So this is something where you can actually gain and gain quite heavily because a lot of people are sell selling urgently. And this is one of the pushing factors for the price. So message me if you're interested in that. I'll be shopping for my Canadian client very soon and we'll see where the prices are going. And now they have deals dropping by five, ten, twenty thousand $20,000 quite easily. Uh, not to mention the luxury properties which are just going through the floor. As you may recall from my winter clips, I was shopping for Stalin era apartments in the city center. They're normally investment apartments. Although investment right now doesn't seem to be working out, it may be a long-term perspective. Just depends on your planning and thinking, so think about it. I'll bring up some pricing and analytics in the next video. I'll try to shoot about real estate quite soon. 
and uh, we'll see where it's all going but right now the market is just hanging in the air the sellers and buyers are not certain of anything buyers are holding on to their dollar assets and the sellers are trying to see where the hell the market is going so uh, apart from the emergency sales uh, the number of offers is uh, has has lowered considerably another interesting economic thing we'll do more economy talk later i've told you about the prices increasing imported items went up in price 10 20 50 100 percent maybe they'll drop by a fraction now that the dollar is down eventually but maybe not if it's short term uh, we're running out of paper not just printer paper but also receipt machine paper so in the shops they just don't have enough of that and uh, it seems like the government is going to digitize this uh, branch of economy somehow which is kind of good for the trees but it doesn't mean we'll cut on import exports to China on that because of this that's said of course tell me what do you think about this guys thank you very much for following the channel best regards from Minsk Belarus by the way speaking of Minsk Belarus my charming language school is um, shut down for a while and the restaurant on the third floor over here although it was a kind of high-end place has also shut down a lot of places are shutting down, people losing their jobs, uh, especially if it's entertainment and import re uh, related. And that's not working out very well, of course. Let's see what happens in the week. Again, thank you for following the channel. Thank you for supporting. It's uh, because of your help that I'm still here, because of the sun as well. Uh, cheers from Minsk. Shop wisely, travel responsibly and the other way around. And I'll hope to see you in the next video. See you later.